today's video is brought to you by Acre Gold. Now, I don't think we really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about hedging your investments against inflation in today's day and age, but you know, we do need to talk about investments. This little gold nugget here is from Acre Gold. This is a 2.5 gram gold bar. How Acre Gold works is it is a subscription based service. Essentially, you pay a monthly fee and those dues come in and go towards units of physical gold. Every time you fill up the cash, if you will, they mail you your denomination of gold. I've gone ahead and added Acre Gold to the affiliates page for your guys' convenience. Now let's get into the video. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of your guys' ideas, and I obviously can't answer every question that you guys have, but if you would like to increase the chances that your question gets turned into a video, then make sure that you submit it through Patreon. The original question has to do with the mounting of cans. Basically, are there any best practices as a newbie that we should be following? Uh, are there any pitfalls? Are there any things that we need to pick up to make the process go more smoothly? Now, before we get carried away, YouTube reviewer, we're not actually gonna be mounting any cans in today's video, so please, calm your tits. As someone who's deleted multiple NFA items over the years, I've learned a thing or two, and I'm gonna do my best to pass that knowledge on to you. So first things first, I have three tools that you need to get a hold of to make this process move more smoothly. The first one is this stuff. This is rock set, not Loctite, not Vibratite, not KY Jelly, rock set. Now don't get me wrong, this stuff is expensive, fair warning. Red Loctite and compounds like it are still likely to melt under the high operating temperatures that your can is likely to reach through continuous use, especially on devices like suppressors that take a long time to acquire and can be a substantial financial investment. We wanna not take any chances with that. So Roxette is essentially liquid ceramic. Now there is a movement that I have seen on the forums and other cesspools like Reddit. You cannot just simply properly torque your can into place. And the reason you can't do that is because you have an interface between the barrel and the mount of the can. And those two components are going to heat differentially. It's just the laws of physics. The barrel and the can are going to heat up at different rates. And because of that, those differential rates of expansion are going to cause problems with that mount staying seated. You need to have some kind of adhesive compound in there that is going to fill the space and make sure that it can't walk around. The second thing that you're gonna pick up are these things. These are suppressor shims. Never, and I repeat, never use a crush washer to mount a suppressor mount. I don't care if the manufacturer includes one. I don't care if the manufacturer suggests that you use it. They're wrong. Do not use these things. I have a full video out there for you. If you would like to deep dive into why you don't use a crush washer when mounting a can, and I'll have it referenced in the description box down below if you want to run that one down. The proper way to mount a suppressor on your gun, if you have to time the brake or suppressor mount, is with shims, torque, and rock set. Combination of those things. The third thing that we need is one of these guys. This is an alignment check rod, specifically a 762 caliber alignment check rod. This particular one happens to be a Surefire one. Uh, there are other manufacturers out there. This is the one that I choose to go with. Surefire doesn't pay me to say that, but they absolutely could and I would take their money. Usually what we're talking about when it comes to aligning is lining up the concentricity of the bore of the can to the concentricity of the barrel. In order to do that, we need a tool that will be able to extend through both of them and give us some kind of visual indicator. Usually when we're talking about lining up those concentricities, we're talking about using the barrel shoulder and can mount interface. The, that interaction usually generates a pretty good uh, concentricity between the two devices. This is what we use to check that that is indeed the case. Speaking of tools, did you know that there is a VSO affiliates page where you can find great deals on products that I trust like PowerTac flashlights? Boom. Use of those codes and affiliate links generates a commission of sale back to the channel. So by buying the cool stuff that you're going to be looking for anyway, you indirectly help out the channel. 
Thank you very much. Speaking subjectively for a second, I prefer direct thread mounts. My second choice is the dead air mount, and many of you will be familiar with this at this point in time. It is a fantastic mount. I don't have anything bad to say about it. The reason I tend to go towards the direct thread mount is because it takes a lot of unthreading to become problematic. The second thing that I would say about direct thread versus using a device like the chemo mount is that direct thread is almost always lighter because, well, quite simply, there are fewer parts. Along those same lines, it's usually the shortest option. Also with adding parts, there's a, another concern that a lot of people perhaps haven't thought about, and that is tolerance stacking concerns. I actually have a little demo that we're gonna do to illustrate this point. All right, let's take our rod and I'll show you what it looks like when this thing is seated all the way. Yeah, pretty much right in the center, as expected. So what I have here is the Peak 30 set up as it normally would be with the direct thread mount on it, but in doing so, I have placed two shims between the mount and the shoulder of the barrel. I have marked our rod here with a little bit of a paint pen, and we're just gonna run this down the barrel and see if the end cap of this suppressor rubs that paint off. And it has not. Now I have switched over to the dead air system. Many of you will be familiar with this. This is the system that I refer people to. I've probably got several thousand dollars in just the mounts alone. That said, in setting this up, I have set it up in such a way as to exploit the points of air maximally. And here's what we've done. I've taken one of those shims from last time and I've inserted it between the brake and the shoulder of the barrel. I've taken a second shim and I've stuffed it between the actual mount and the suppressor body here. I have a fresh mark set up just like last time. Ooh, this is gonna be bad. We have indeed cleared out a space there in the center of that mark. Again, I wanna reiterate that this is not a problem with a dead air mount. This is a characteristic inherent to any mount that uses any kind of brake as a mounting apparatus, if you will. I'm gonna to attempt to simplify what's going on here. Your device is centered around a thread and there is some stock inside that thread. That stock provides some support. Now, due to the inherent nature of a thread, there has to be some slop, some play built into that thread or else it wouldn't work. You'd have to wrench every single thing that you ever threaded on something if there wasn't some play there, particularly if it got dirty. So it's important that that is there for uh, quality of life type stuff. So by taking both of those shims and putting them in the same place, after we've depleted that little bit of play, it simply moves the can forward. It doesn't add any more to the angle the can is hanging off. However, by separating those two shims, we can now compound that tolerance that is inherent again to the thread of the of the can and we can push it in one direction and that's most likely going to occur by gravity however there can be some things as far as the configuration of your firearm that can exacerbate this problem and that's for instance why uh, we discourage the use of those thread pitch conversion pieces you're better off to just buy the correct thread mount. I know that they're expensive, but if you're using those brakes, buy the correct thread mount. Don't buy uh, like all 30 cal mounts and then try to screw 556 five, conversions into them because that's just it's just a bad idea. And ultimately, that's why it's really important that you check your work.